as I was saying, the slam wrist program within itself is pretty straightforward. Just, uh, just follow the four-step plan before every job and throughout the day. And then manage the job completely. Stop, look around, analyze the area and job to identify any hazards, and then manage the job correctly by eliminating, avoiding, or fixing any hazards. SLAM, S-L-A-M, stop, look, analyze, and manage. Okay, that's all I have for this morning's safety meeting. Any questions? Sounds simple enough. Not much more than looking before crossing the road. Well, that's close to the idea. Let's use that as a test case. Can anyone think of the hazards that crossing the road would create and ways to manage it? You got the traffic. Right. How would you manage it? Look both ways before you cross. Also, don't start crossing between two parked cars. The traffic can't see you. Even better yet, go to a corner or designated crossing area. Right. That's what it's all about. Think of the hazards and the ways to manage them. We've been doing this all along, but not as a conscious effort. Okay, anything else? Fine, let's get to work. Michelle and Walt, you're loading customer trucks. Howard, I need you to clean up the berm on the front entrance ramp. It's getting to look a bit, little bit ragged okay. in a couple areas. And Walt, I need you to clean up the slip on the back ramp. Hey guys, think about that safety talk. L stop, look around, analyze the risk before you start your jobs, and manage any risks by fixing, getting help, or reporting the hazard. Stop, look, analyze, fix it, get help, and report. That's supposed to figure, not slam. I get it. Think about it any way you like, just as long as you think about it. Get to work, smart aleck. Hey, Walt, let's go through this SLAM program together. All right, how does it start? Starts with an S, as in stop. Stop and look around. What hazards do you see? Well, stockpiles. What about stockpiles? For example, this stockpile over here. If you undercut it, it's going to slide down on you. In a recent five-year period, end loader operators suffered 816 lost time accidents. Of these, 29 incidents, or 4%, occurred when the operator or the loader was struck by falling material. However, falling materials accounted for half of the eight fatalities that occurred to end loader operators during this period. Right, so how do we manage the hazard? First you take your bucket, you know, and you drag back, and if it's still too high and it's a hazard, then you'll have to load out from the side until it falls down safely. Sounds good. All right, your turn. Identify the hazards with a truck. Customer truck or haul truck? Both. Well, there's really not much danger in getting run over by a customer truck if you stay in the loader, but anybody on the ground is definitely fair game. No end loader operators were injured during the five year period, but there were four accidents where other miners were hit by end loaders. Three of them were fatalities. And the managing part? First, we don't load any truck if the driver is not in the truck. If he gets out of the truck while we're loading him, we stop until he gets back in. And if any other pedestrians show up, we stop loading also. Right. I almost ran into the side of the truck the other day when he snuck up behind me when I was cleaning up. The guy never called me on the radio to tell me he was coming. So if he doesn't call, can we send him to the end of the line? Well, I'm not sure if we have the authority, but it definitely gives the office something to think about. Not just for the lack of communication, but yeah, yeah, I do think they should be punished. If they get out of their truck while we're loading them, they need to go to the end of the line. I like that idea. I think I'm gonna put it in the suggestion box and I can win a prize. Sounds like a winner. 
Now, back to the hazards. What else? Hmm, what about that job the boss gave you? What job? Oh, yeah. I gotta clean the slip up behind the back ramp. I hadn't been back there in months. Let's slam it! Has anything changed back there? Yeah, the contracted haulers have been hauling back there this week. So, there's extra traffic. Uh-huh, and they may not be familiar with our signals and methods or that blind turn. Twelve lost time accidents occurred involving at least two pieces of equipment. Although these accidents accounted for less than 2% of the accidents, the potential for serious injury or death is greatly elevated, especially when one of the vehicles is smaller than the other. Someone needs to notify the contractors before we get started. Yeah, I do believe we could put up a warning sign or station a flag man there. Good idea. I think someone needs to get on the radio and call the foreman to notify the contractor to get a flagman. Yeah, I guess so. Well, I'm going to get back to work. Ninety-two tripping and falling lost time accidents, roughly 11 percent, occurred during the five-year period. Ouch! Maybe we should have looked around for tripping hazards, too. Okay, before I drive down the ramp, I need to stop and look around. Now, what are the hazards? Hmm. Now, I probably need to recheck the brakes on the level before starting down the ramp. Hmm, what else? A lot of rain last night. I need to check the ramp for slips on the berm and the whole side. Okay, there's always traffic. They'll be hauling up and down here soon. It's going to require constant checking. Maybe I should get some traffic cones for above and below where I'm working. Hmm, I wonder if a sign would be overdoing it. A hundred and eighty-four accidents, or 23%, of the lost time accidents involve the operator being bounced around in the cab. Most were caused by running over uneven roadbeds, ruts, and rocks. Wow, now that was interesting. Good thing I have my seatbelt on. Hey, now there's another slam exercise. Now to manage that, I'd say to slow down when the road gets rough and to always wear the seatbelt. Aha, now that sounds good. Make sure that antifreeze is, is at the right level so we don't get any loaded and lose the engine. And uh, I tell you, tomorrow we've got a big base order coming up, so we need to have everything ready. The Walt and I were going over some slam wrist exercises this morning, and it does make you think. We came up with half dozen hazards and how to manage them. I was thinking of it myself. I came up with a few of my own. What were your hazards? Well, the first one we talked about was stockpiling and then traffic. So, between us, we have a pretty good list. This is good. Anybody else got anything? 
One thing, I saw Howard climbing off his loader. He had a thermos in one hand and his cooler on his shoulder, and it looked awkward. I gotta have my coffee. Yes, Howard, we know you love your coffee, but that's not the point. You're right. If your foot slipped, you wouldn't have a good hold on your ladder. Yeah, it's kind of hard to keep three points of contact when you're clutching your liquid life preserver. Miners suffered the largest percentage of lost time accidents while mounting and dismounting their machines. This accounted for 220 accidents, or 27% of the total 816 lost time accidents. Now this is what I use, it's a tagline. Real simple, easy. All you do is go around anything that you're gonna hook up and make sure it's secure up here. You lower it slowly to the ground. Now that's what I call managing a potential hazard. It leaves both my hands free. Now this way, I maintain three points of contact all the way to the ground. A slam dunk. Or a grand slam. Oh, give me a break. OK, OK, knock it off, you clowns. Let's get to work. I guess he slammed the door on you two. Stop, look, analyze, manage. Slam risks.